Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Barry, and I do Tesla POV style content in my 2024 Tesla Model 3. I specifically focus on Tesla's full self-driving capabilities and software. So if you're new here, welcome. We are out for a drive in my Model 3 right now. We're running full self-driving version 13.2.2. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable that right now. And there we go. So now the vehicle is going to be autonomously driving itself for the remainder of the route. We are showing weather of about 58 degrees Fahrenheit. We are in the standard profile for the full self-driving mode. Out of the three modes that full self-driving offers, I do like to stick with standard. You see this yellow light here, the car just went th right through, no hesitation whatsoever. So version 13 for FSD is doing a great job with traffic but also just normal day-to-day -day situations just like you had seen there with the yellow light it didn't hesitate at all it was very confident committed to passing the intersection to do that yellow light so again version 13 has been absolutely amazing going back to the profiles i do stick to standard most of the time i think it's a good blend between the three so we're going now 42 in a 40 and we're right behind this Toyota SUV in front of me here. So we'll see how this route goes today. I think that we should have moderate traffic. It's Saturday afternoon, almost 4 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll see, we're, we're gonna be making this left-hand turn here. All right, so we got the green light. We're gonna be making the left-hand turn. Very smooth, no issues at all. I do not have a destination put into the maps. A lot of people don't know that you can just enable FSD without putting anything into the map. So you can just toggle it on and the car will essentially take it wherever it wants to go. So you don't always have to put in a destination if you just want to go out for a cruise and test out Tesla's FSD capabilities, you can just toggle that on. Now if you're on the fence between getting Tesla's full self-driving software you might be in a tesla and you don't have fsd purchased or subscribed or you don't have a tesla but you're on the fence of getting one and you're not sure of how well full self-driving is inside of a tesla so i'm here to reassure you that with this latest update especially on version 13 that the capabilities and the functionality and the confidence and overall safety is now at an all-time high I have been testing full self-driving for the better part of a year. There are many other people that have been on Tesla's full self-driving journey much longer than that. Um, but I've been on the journey for about a year, so I've seen over the past 12 months or so how much improvement this software has gotten. And I can't say enough good things about version 13. This version just released to the public probably about two or three weeks ago, and the jump from 12 to 13 has been exponential. So if you've been on the fence and you've been kind of waiting it out and watching videos on what Tesla's FSD can do, how safe it is, and how comfortable others feel in it, I think right now is a great time to go for it. Because with version 13, I feel very safe. I feel as if it's very reliable. And overall, I think it's getting to a point now where we might be getting very close to autonomy. And the reason I say that is because they've included in this new update a park or start rather start from park feature where you can just essentially click a button after putting in your destination and the car will back out of your garage, out of your driveway, out from your apartment complex, wherever you're housing situation is whether that's like i said in the garage driveway parking lot you can just put in your destination click a button on the dry on the touch screen here and the car will take you all the way to your destination so that's a new feature you've had to engage full self-driving during your drive so you wouldn't be able to back out from a spot fsd never used to be able to back out or reverse in general so now they've included these features that make it feel very autonomous and very independent. You can see here we're going to be making a right here. The lane ends right up ahead. So we'll see how Tesla does here. So it's recognizing that 
and it just passed that car because I guess for its standards it was going too slow and so that's what I mean right now this version that we're in on FSD is just very independent it's making decisions that I would make if I was in control so because of those things and because of the patterns that I'm seeing I would really emphasize and encourage you to at least test drive the FSD capabilities that Tesla has out for its fleet today they're always releasing 30-day free trials for users to use the system so if you do get that in your car and you're already in a Tesla I would highly recommend just subscribing to that 30-day free trial so at least you can get a sense of what it can and can't do watching my videos is a really great way of getting real-time experience on the safety and what FSD is capable of but of course you can't really beat the real thing so if you do get the opportunity to try it out for yourself for free with one of their 30-day free trials I would encourage you to give it a shot and see what you think but in my opinion I think it's really really great and light years better than even where we were just a year ago I'm sure if you go back even further than that the progress has been exponential but even over the last 6 to 12 months it's been absolutely amazing to see the progression um, overall and so the way I gauge whether or not I'm satisfied and happy with full self-driving is how stressed or not stressed I am but what I mean is it used to be where I would be hesitant with allowing the car to make decisions on its own so I would be really watching it like a hawk and I would have to be disengaging it because it would be making decisions that are incorrect and my stress levels would be medium to high but with this latest version update from 13 I've had none of those feelings I've had very very limited stress and I'm very happy with allowing the vehicle to make the decisions on its own and so that's a big part of the experience as well is how comfortable do you feel behind the wheel now you do have to still supervise the vehicle so there's a camera right here right behind the rear view mirror and that camera monitors your eyes and if you're not paying attention or if you're texting and driving or if you're recording something you will get flagged they will see that and they'll the system will essentially alert you from the interior cabin it'll ask you to pay attention and if you don't do that the nagging or the alert system will get more and more dramatic it'll get more loud they'll kind of issue a siren inside of the cabin so they really will do everything they can to get your attention back onto the road so you have to supervise it still and that's another thing is that I highly highly recommend everybody that's behind the wheel of a Tesla with FSD enabled be very vigilant you still have to remain very cautious I've had a situation just a week or two ago in one of my previous videos and I'll link it here on the top right I highly suggest you check it out the car almost went on red and I've had a lot of feedback from you guys in terms of what had happened what you think had happened I still don't understand and there's really no good root cause but it, it tried to go on a red light and I've watched that video over and over and I've had a lot of you guys watch it as well and so I had to disengage intervene and stop it from going on a red light so that's the thing is definitely be vigilant stay cautious and stay very engaged with FSD because it's still very much a supervised model they're not marketing this as a fully autonomous vehicle yet so yeah that's why I think you should definitely give it a shot if you've been on the fence give it a try if you do see that free trial come in also thanks for all of your support you guys have been really engaged with my content it's been really awesome to see new subscribers joining the channel we're really growing quickly so if this is your type of content and you want to see more definitely consider hitting the subscribe button I will be releasing videos just like this as Tesla releases incremental updates to their software documenting the journey and showing the progression and then also encountering situations and seeing how the vehicle handles it so definitely consider subscribing to the channel it, it helps me out a lot and it's great to see all of you guys engaged in the content I'm getting a ton of comments from you guys on different situations so it's been really really cool to collaborate with all of you guys
All right, so the car is slowing down because it recognizes that that vehicle up ahead here, this red Jetta, has its turn signal on, and it, now it's merging into the right lane, but it took a little while for that red Jetta to finally make its way. So it had its signal on, but it wasn't making a move. And FSD recognized that and slowed down very cautiously to ensure that it has room in case that Jetta does decide to turn. So it's those minute details that are so important for safety and it replicates what a human driver would do. If I saw that red Jetta with its blinker on but not making a move, I would approach it just as cautiously as FSD just did to ensure that if that car does decide to merge into the right lane, I'm not obstructing it. Here we have this Honda Accord going towards the left-hand side and look at this. It is just the vehicle went or my vehicle just turned left into this lane here to get around that Honda Accord. I switched over to the hurry mode as well. So that's what we're seeing now. As soon as we switched it over to hurry mode, we're seeing the car make decisions quicker. So it's it's definitely adhering to the hurry profile, but that Honda Accord definitely uh, cut us out in the front and the Tesla decided to merge onto the left-hand lane. So that was really, really cool to see. One thing I noticed is that when I switch from standard to hurry, the gap that the Tesla creates between us and the vehicle in front of it is smaller. So the hurry mode really allows for the vehicle to get closer to the car in front when you're stopping at a red light or a stop sign. I'm not sure the logic behind that. Okay, so we have this other Accord here that made a left hand right in front of us. And you could see the Tesla again went straight into the opposing lane so it it changed lanes again to the right and then it assumed the center lane so that is really cool to see i'm seeing lots of these great decisions being made in hurry mode and it's exactly what you would expect i mean if you're in hurry mode it's making decisions quicker and it's making decisions that'll get you to the destination faster so it all makes sense but it's very cool to see all these decisions but i have noticed that in hurry mode the distance between you and the car in front of you is smaller. I don't know the logic. I don't know why that is. I mean, you're not going to get anywhere quicker just because you're closing the gap. But if anybody knows, let me know down in the comments below or if that's something that just I've noticed. Maybe it's a um, an anomaly. Maybe it's not actually anything to do with hurry mode. But if you're noticing the same thing in terms of creating a gap that's smaller so the car is inching closer to the car in front of you in hurry mode, definitely leave a comment down below all right so we're making this left turn here to get around this vehicle again we're seeing characteristics of hurry mode come out in terms of switching lanes more often choosing routes and decisions that are quicker in terms of getting you to the destination faster so it's really cool to see all those little decisions being made right in front of me all right we have this yellow light perfect not a problem at all it's pre pretty much yellow to red here but the vehicle to the right of us also went so fsd made the decision to commit and it went straight through amazing to see those and i did get a comment from one of you guys asking about the modes and how to toggle them so if you use your right scroll wheel if you're on a model 3 in 2024 model 3 you can switch between those three profiles just by using the right stro scroll wheel here so if I toggle this over to the left I'm in standard if I do that one more time I'm in chill mode so I'm gonna go ahead and put that back over to hurry mode but yeah you can do that uh, completely from the right toggle wheel so it makes it much easier if you ever want to switch profiles in the middle of a drive so it's very quick and very easy to do that also, let me know down in the comments below which angle you guys like better in terms of the POV style angle where you could kind of see everything that I'm seeing or if you prefer the angle that's towards my rear shoulder here on the right side where you kind of just see the, the full cabin view with the windshield. Let me know down in the comments below which angle you prefer because I'm going to be trying out different uh, different cameras and I want to make sure that I provide the best viewing experience for you guys. So we got some slowdowns here. This Ford went towards the right to get past this blue Prius and it looks like FSD is going to be doing the same thing. So this Prius is definitely going much slower 
than the flow of traffic so FSD pretty much has passed it it merged right to get ahead of the blue Prius and then merged back into the left lane and we have this yellow light so it's slowing down for that very nicely I can also tell that in hurry mode your car accelerates much faster so it's taking off from lights much quicker from stop lights much faster which makes sense as well that's all aligned with what you would expect from the hurry mode one thing that really fascinates me about tesla's software and their camera system is how far these cameras on this car can see out i mean there's sometimes cases where there's a pedestrian that's quite a bit ways out it's hard for me to gauge how far they're actually out but far enough where sometimes i even have to squint to understand if it's a person or if it's something else like it's it's quite a bit of a distance out at times but fsd can easily pick it up and identify that in the system and display it on the screen so it's it's picking up 360 degrees objects that are very very far both cars pedestrians as well so it's very interesting to see how well their cameras and their sensors actually work it's really really amazing we'll be making this left turn here and then this area is going to be pretty much changing speed limits immediately down to 25 miles per hour so we'll see how the car handles that shift in a second as you can see here the speed limit is 25 all right we're picking up speed to 34 35 okay 36 now i believe that i have my max offset set to 25 percent and my regular offset set to plus 10. so we're doing 37 now it is a little bit fast I'm gonna go ahead and lower that down a little bit. You have the ability to toggle your speed up or down on the fly as well by using your right scroll wheel. So by doing that, you can lower your speed if you're going too fast, or you can increase your speed if you feel as if you're going too slow. It is keeping up with the flow of traffic now. We're changing from a 25 to 35, so the Ford Explorer in front of us did pick up speed and we are too so the FSD is now going 35 in a 35 just went up to 36 so that's great it is recognizing the speed limit changes and it is also adhering to the flow of traffic so we're now going about almost 40 in the 35 here which is great we should be making a slight right up ahead not this right but the next one slowing down nicely here and we will be making this right hand turn very nice very smooth now up ahead we will pass the intersection and then we'll be making an immediate left so we'll see how it reacts there it's going quite slow here for some reason past this intersection not sure why we're going 23 it started to slow down well in advance to our turn here but here is the turn that we should be making we'll be making this left hand turn into this plaza and then we should be making an immediate left following that and we do so that was very nice and then we should be looping around the other side of this business here and then it should drop us out right in front we'll see how it acts it is slowing down so there's a pothole and it slowed down for that pothole which is absolutely amazing to see that is a new feature of version 13 for it to slow down on potholes here it is it's looping around it should stop here and there you go and the drive is over so you see that there was zero interventions and no disengagements on this drive so again if you're on the fence i would highly suggest you try it out especially if you have access to one of their 30-day free trials i appreciate you guys tagging along in today's video thanks for all your support and again if this is your type of content definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and I'll catch you guys in the next video.